Hello YouTube, today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to make cool text in Cinema 4D and how to put that text into Photoshop. Alright, so first gotta open up Cinema 4D. Let's give it a minute here. And as you can probably see, when it loads up, I already have some text already made. Now, the reason it says nation is because I was just working on other uh, like backgrounds and stuff, and I happened to save it as that. So, you can see over here, I have like all this stuff already made. I'm gonna have this entire like setup, like all this stuff, in a download link in the description, so you can just download that and be started right here. It already has like the Lightroom in it, and it's gonna have all these materials are already down here. Now, well, I'm going to start off and I'm going to delete all my text already here so I can start from scratch. Now you could just change the text on what it says, but I already have it like already made and wrapped. So, first off what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to MoGraph and Mo Text right there, okay. Put it kind of in the middle or wherever you want it. Uh, I'm going to make this say tutorial. And zoom out here. Um, depth. I'm probably gonna go with 100 just for now. Looks pretty nice. And then I'm gonna pick a font. Um, we'll go with this right here. I believe this is the Call of Duty font, if I'm not mistaken. Too. All right. Now, I'm not going to deal with colors right now. Actually, I am going to deal with colors right now, so I want to put a second layer behind it. So I'm just going to go around and pick out something. I'm not going to use any of these fancy text yet. I'm just going to use this plain silver one and click and drag it and pop it right on there. Okay. So, this got a straight up text tutorial. It doesn't look very fancy so far. Just straight up tutorial. It has a few shades on it, but nothing special. So, I'm going to click, make sure my text is selected, and I'm going to hold Control C and Control V, and that will copy and paste it. After that, I'm going to go to coordinates, and I'm going to turn the Z, where it says XYZ, I'm going to change this first Z from 0, actually I'm going to go the other way, I'm going to change it to 10. What that'll do is it'll make the first part that we the, the first text kind of like stick out and you can also change this color to make it look different and after you have this all done and you have 10 centimeters for the Z go to caps and then the first cap go fill it cap and the end cap to fill a cap and change the radius down to 2 for both of them right there 2 and 2 and I don't know if you can see it because it's yeah, I'm not going to do it right now uh, first, before you do that, you're probably going to want to change the color of the background. I usually do black, and it makes good if you overlay it in Photoshop, it makes it look pretty nice because it won't show up on that part, it will just show up on the front part. And what I mean by that is you can't see it when it renders out because it's black and it matches the background, but you can kind of see it right here with the A on the top. I don't know if you can see that because it's kind of lighter, but it, it looks pretty good if you just have a black background on it, but that's just my opinion. I'll give you a second uh, way of making text, like having like different layers. I don't know how to explain it, but I'll show you later. Um, anyway, once you have this done, and most people I know like the have it, the text kind of like wrapped in a spherical shape, so you're going to want to go to this little blue bendy thingy and hold that and click wrap. And actually go ahead and do another one of those, making sure you have two wraps. And you're going to take the text, no, you're going to take the wrap, and you're going to click and drag it to the text. And don't worry about what that does, just take the other wrap too and drag that onto the text. Now what you see here is you have a bunch of letters in a circle, and you're going to click on the one of the wraps, and then hold control and click on the other wrap so they're both selected. And just turn down this tension a little bit until you see something that you like. And you're going to have to mess around with it because, as you can see, it bends the text in all a bunch of different directions. So we'll have to fix that in a minute. 
I tend to go around 30. So 30 is what I'll do. I'll leave the text in the middle here. All right, now you see how once we have them selected, we can move the bend. You're gonna move that to the center of the text, which is about in the middle of the O and the, well, about the end of the O in the tutorial. Now, you can see how it doesn't look very good because it's all bent and the text doesn't, the T and the L don't actually wrap around it. So what you're going to do to fix that is you're going to keep these selected and you're going to go to width and you're just going to hold that down until you find a point where the text gets skinnier so it doesn't look all stretched out. And I'm going to go to about 555 is usually what I do and it makes the text look back to normal. And now to fix the outer letters, you're going to want to just select one of the wraps. And this little square is right here. Right there. You're going to take that and just drag it out. Now it's kind of hard to see because I'm moving the black text behind it, but just keep going a little bit. Like I'm going to go right here. And now I'm going to take this number right here, the width number. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go to the other text and I'm going to paste it on the width of that and there you go it should have it completely wrapped and looking very nice now if you can also go back and just fix it if you need to because it might not look too good you say you didn't you know like wrap it far enough or you could still go back and edit the wrap so you just select them both by holding control and you could wrap them even more I tend to stay like yeah, about the 30-ish, 35. And then if you click render, I have some render failures, but that's okay. It's kind of curved, so you can begin to see what I'm talking about. Um, like you could also like use a different, uh, you want to call it texture or material, and see what it looks like when you render that out. Like now, I have a white outline to it. and that looks halfway decent. So another thing if you don't like any of the textures here, like I know a lot of these, I I have a lot of pro like I got these textures from somebody else. I don't remember who, but they're most of them don't look very good. So what I'd like to do sometimes is go to file, load material preset and mess around with all of these. I'll go to visualize materials and just look around at all the materials that they have and like go to metal and just go lead and it will load up a lead kind of texture for your text and you just put that on one of them and render it out and it should have a texture like uh, a metal like the uh, I can't what did I just put on there I can't remember what it's called jeez anyway like you can see I don't know if you can see it right now, but it's a kind of like a crumbly texture on it, just like the metal would have, and it actually looks a lot better than what I had before. Now, when put that right there is fine if you put it on the sides, because it's not going on the front of the text, like the, where the words are, it's going on the sides, but if you want to put something on the front, like if I were to move that to my other text where it goes onto the front of it, when you render it, it's not going, nothing's going to pop up. You want to go down to keep your text, well, keep the uh, material that I that you just put on there edit it like highlight it and go down to projector projection where it says UVW mapping that right there will put it on the sides of it not the front you want to click frontal or you can mess around with spherical and all this other stuff but I like to do frontal and I don't know if you can see when I click that but it changed it the texture from the sides and now it's just putting it on the front of the text so now the front of the text has the um, texture like the sides had so that right there was the first text tutorial that I um, did. Now I'm going to show you the second way how to make cool text. Basically you could use the same text we're using now. Just click your text, hold control and make sure you have them both selected. Go to object and change the depth to about uh, we'll go 15. That makes it pretty thin. Now why do we want thin text? Well, I'll show you in a minute. 
you're gonna go click this box right here it's the fourth icon up here in the top right corner and it'll give you four screens they're all different angles of your text you got the right front top and the perspective view we're gonna be focusing on this part right here the top part so if you want to click the same box in that top corner it'll just give you this screen and now you see the top view and how curved your text is using our text that's still uh, curved you're going to control C control V to copy and paste and there you have the second layer you duplicated both of those you're going to take this blue arrow and you're going to drag it back to about I don't know just about like that far and you're going to do the same thing again control C control V and you're going to keep dragging it back to about there again control C control V just keep doing that until you got about five of them when you have that, you can go to this box in the top right corner again. Go to this one, your main view, your perspective view, and click the box on that one right here. And you have the tutorial up again. And now, if you can see, it is looks like it has diff, like several layers behind it. And let me render it out. This might take a little longer to render. I don't know if I have time to do the whole thing, but maybe if you can get the O in the middle see what it looks like I'm gonna go ahead and open up Photoshop too for when we go to load it in there come on gonna open up a, a new and I'll just open up like a desktop background size not gonna do anything much with it I'm just gonna load the text in here and pretty much just show you some cool facts for it all right I don't know if you can see it that well but it's starting it has like several layers to it which makes the text look real nice but um, I'm going to stop that right now and I'm, make sure now I'm gonna render it out for my final picture view and to do that we need our right correct settings and you're gonna go to this one right here click that go to output and make sure you have your width set to 1080 and your height set to 720. Go to save. Make sure you have the format set to PNG. Make sure you have alpha channel selected. You must have it selected or it will include the background. You don't want the background included, so make sure you have the alpha channel selected. Now, file for the save. You're just going to click this and you're going to save wherever you want. That's what your picture is going to be saved under. I already have mine preset, so I'm not going to mess with it. And when you download, if you actually downloaded my um, template here, you should have this ambient occlusion and global illumination already selected. If you don't, go down here to effect, and they should all be down here. But they're not down there because I already have them up there. But when they are up there, you just click on them and click on that. And there they are. So once you have that done, you're fine. You're ready to render out your final picture. You go to the zoom here, and you have to keep the text between these bars. I don't know if you could see them, but right here, it gets darker on this side and lighter on this side. There's a bar that goes all the way down, say on this side. You have to keep whatever you're rendering out between those bars or it'll get cut off the screen. So. This is my final picture right here, let's say, and you're going to want to click the center button right here, hold it down, and go to Render to Picture Viewer. And click Yes, because I'm overwriting a previous one. And you're just going to let that render out. Now, I have no, long how, I have no idea how long this is going to take. So, um, in the meantime, I guess, I'll just go to Photoshop, and I'll show you how I set up my desktop background since we're waiting. So open up a picture or a blank document and I go to double click it or whatever and go to blending options I go to gradient overlay I already have a few presets mine is pretty much to a almost dark black color to a lightest charcoal color in 
And then I go to, from style, I go to, oops, not angle, I go to radial. And I reverse that. And I take the scale to 150. That way it kind of puts a lighter glow in the center and kind of fades to darker around the edges and just click OK right there. Um, actually, I know what I'll do. While this thing is still rendering out, all you have to do to like put it in Photoshop, you would go to File, Place. I'm not going to use the text that we already have. I'm going to use one that I already had rendered out from previous other things. Actually, I'll just go ahead and I'll use my Crevo lettering, which is right here. Make it a little bigger. Put it right in the center. All right. Now, as you can see right here, I have a little bit of the lights from my Cinema 4D. It actually stayed managed to get in my picture. That's okay. You might have to do that. Just cl create a clipping mask down here. Click the eraser and just simply erase those marks there. All right. Now, to get the designs on your text, it's pretty much your preference. I'll show you what I prefer. Double click it. It's drop shadow and I turn the global light off, distance to zero, spread will go about uh, 20, and then scale I like about 40. Let's type that in right there 40. So it has a nice little black backdrop to it, makes it kind of blend in. Next, I will go to gradient overlay and I don't know if you guys should have it as a preset already. It is the black to white or white to black one. Make sure that's clicked. And go to blend mode overlay. Now once that's selected, you can see how it kind of fades to a blacker at the bottom and a lighter at the top. I think that's a really nice effect. Sorry about that. I had an unexpected visit from my father. Um, where was I? Alright. So have it set to overlay. You can turn the opacity down just a bit. Nope, that's a little too far. Just to have it a little. I'll go 85. And it'll give it a nice little gray bottom. Now, generally, I'll just leave it as this, or I'll go to a pattern overlay. And I have this one already saved. It's a metal texture. And I'll also set that to overlay. And I'll give it a nice metal texture, which I like a lot. Opacity. I'll turn it down to about just 50 half and it looks like it has a nice metal texture on the text. That's pretty much it for the text now that it's in there. And yeah, that should be it. Oh, in the meantime, our tutorial thing was done, so I'll show you what that looks like when we put it in there. Place, it's right here. Bigger right there. I'll hide the one in the back. And actually, since I have this one already made in the background, I can go to right click, copy layer style, and then I could right click on the new text and paste layer style, and I'll paste what I already had on the other one onto this one, which makes it look nice too. So this was a not so quick tutorial on how to put cinema, ugh, make cool text in Cinema 4D and put it on to Photoshop. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, like this video and comment. That would be very much appreciated. Thank you.